Hello, my lichens. Welcome to Anne's Morning, a newsletter that is also a podcast, as you can tell by this very sound. <laughs> this episode is titled Anniversary and Pride. And that is because this is the second anniversary of Anne's Morning. Yes, I've been two years sending out this newsletter. Not as long doing the podcast version, but yeah, two years of Ant's Morning. Woo! And Pride, because this is officially my third Pride special. Yes. For the first two Pride specials, I went for a more rough month approach and even though I still think anger is key in this fight and in any social fight really, this time I wanted to focus on celebrating queer people, which is also very important. And if you didn't have the chance to read these previous issues, you can go to my archive you know, tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. Archive, I think. Yes, slash archive. <laughs> and the first Pride special was Heavy Days in June. The second was Let Them Pray for Me. And the issue that marked this newsletter first anniversary was titled Anniversary, Morning and Feast. Okay, on to the next section. Non-binary triumphs. A content warning for mention of cancer. Beware of that. Okay, I have some good news about two of my favorites I'd like to share with you. First thing, Andrea Gibson is finally getting up on a stage again to do what they do best, reading their poems and more or less good jokes. I say it from a place of love, of course, <laughs> um, and making us cry in pain and, I don't know, pure beautifulness. They have been pretty busy these last two years with the pandemic, having cancer and recovering, so this comeback is very much appreciated by us, the fans. Although I'm sad that they are not planning to come to Spain, but I'm happy nonetheless. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in that, I translated to Spanish myself their poem Orlando for my first Pride special, Heavy Days in June, and also their poem Fight for Love for an issue titled Good Love and Bruises, if I'm not mistaken. Also, if you go to Andrea's Instagram page, you can find a recent post, which is a video of them reading one of their poems, rehearsing in their kitchen, in front of a very attentive and soft <laughs> and fluffy audience. Uh, they're reading for four very handsome dogs. And at the end of the video, one of the dogs sneezes and Andrea says, mockingly angry, no sneezes or coughing a lot in the audience. <laughs> and it's very funny, so I recommend you watch it. And the other news is that Dante Collins, another one of my favorites, just won New Voices 2022's first prize at frontier poetry with a poem that if it's not published when this newsletter reaches you will be at any moment 
So keep an eye on frontierpoetry.com and you will see it soon, I hope. I also translated their poem What the Day Know by Heart for my very first newsletter issue that was titled A. <laughs> okay, next section, paving the way, but end point. I'm not sure at all if that's how you pronounce it in French, but you know, <laughs> is that technique in ballet when dancers go only touching the floor with the points of their toes. You know, I'm not a native English speaker, so I struggle explaining that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, a few months ago I discovered a ballet company called Ballet 22, And I think June is just the right month to tell you about it. According to their website, let me quote, the creation of Ballet 22 was inspired by a lack of representation and opportunities in the ballet field for men, transgender and non-binary artists to perform, pro to perform professionally endpoint. While there are opportunities to perform in a drag comedy context, Ballet 22 seeks to present a range of work beyond these confines. Ballet 22 is dedicated to commissioning new works that give representation to men's dancers and point, as well as works that amplify queer voices. In addition, the company aims to create positive change to ballet culture by providing a respectful, safe place to work with equitable wages for artists. Um, forgive me, I'm not really sure how to pronounce men with an X instead of the E, but that was what I was trying to say. So traditionally, ballet shows roles are very clearly divided between, okay, all these following sentences are not what I think, you have to picture them on italics, okay? Ballet shows roles are very clearly divided between the ones men should do and the ones women should do. Men can only perform the male roles and women can only perform the female ones. And of course, the endpoint technique is reserved exclusively for female ballerinas. It fills me up with warm glitter watching men and non-binary people, and not only white people of course, dancing endpoint, holding up each other indifferently, performing any kind of classic and new roles, is beautiful. And now go to Ballet 22 website or to this newsletter written version and look in awe at the dancer Daniel R. Duret in this promotional picture of the Ballet Carmen. And you can see him posing with one foot and point inside a space with columns and capitals, rather neoclassic, I think. And he's wearing a deep red lipstick, jacket and shorts, all with the same hue of red, which is very satisfying for me. <laughs> and it's the most appropriate outfit for perform in Carmen, I think. The next section is titled My face is almost the same as an earthenware pitcher. Last week I rolled up my sleeves and drew my first portrait in five years. I'm putting together an updated portfolio to look for illustration jobs, so if you know about an offer in this sector or would like me to draw you something in exchange of money, of course, <laughs> I'm available and this is not a drill, this is not a joke. 
So, it's been a while since I felt comfortable drawing myself or anything else, so this was a, a win, I think. If you'd like to know more about this piece's process and my relationship with self-portraiture, consider joining my Patreon for as little as 1 euro or 150 dollars a month, because I just posted about this very self-portrait. Well, you can look at the final piece on the written version of this podcast, of course, that's for free anyway, so go there. I, I would like that very much. I'm proud of this piece. And if you allow me to quote myself, one of my art teachers used to say we should look at the people we draw, including ourselves, exactly the same way we look at earthenware pictures. Maybe they're not as prevalent in your cultures, but in Spain those pictures are still a big deal. Hell, there's even a Velázquez painting featuring one. <laughs> uh, you can look it up on Google. Uh, that Velázquez painting, it's titled The Water Cellar of Seville, and it features a stunning earthenware pitcher. <laughs> and this statement my teacher did is not about pit putting earthenware pictures down, but about looking at ourselves and other things from a distance when we are trying to draw them, as if it was the first time we saw them, with all our attention. I think that's not only applicable to self-portrait, of course. And on to the last section. Jesus, that woman in front of the fridge. <laughs> I had so much fun coming up with this title. <laughs> okay, today I'm closing with a fragment from a Jane Campbell poem, fellow bisexual poet comrade, Jane Campbell, also another of my favorite authors. I think this piece is my favorite from her collection The Girl Aquarium, which is an absolutely amazing poetry collection and I will recommend it relentlessly. So I'm going to read you a fragment of this poem that is a bit sexy but not explicit, but beware of that. Kitchen by Jen Campbell what would you do if I died right now? Here, you asked, your hand still resting on my thigh. Your eyes focused on the ceiling, on the splash of curry sauce to the left of the light which doesn't work. Let's not talk about death where food is prepared, I said. You turned away, stood up and opened the fridge. The light shone past you, an outline of you, your feet tapping on the floor. Your mother would be home soon, to her yellow and white check tea towels, and her hand-painted bread bean, and her daughter standing like Jesus in front of the refrigerator. I grabbed your foot. Come on, your nipples will freeze and you'll be cryogenically frozen. I absolutely love this piece. Also, one of my first posts on Patreon was a deep reading of this very poem. And oh, I, I have like tender feelings for this post. <laughs> I think, I still think it's quite good, although I was a little Patreon baby. <laughs> and that's all for now. As always, I want to thank my dear, dear and morning subscribers, who by the way are already 50. Comparing with influencers and YouTubes and YouTubers numbers, this is not much, but this is a lot for me. You amazing people who enjoy reading or listening to my ramblings, thank you. Also, thank you to my unofficial Patreons, Nacho and Raul, 
and to the official ones, Larry, Jorge, Rufi, Lucia, Chelsea, and especially the last ones, Cat to Fo, the most recent addition to the Bromiliad gang, and Katia, last addition to the Buglos team, whose first book, by the way, was the first one from someone I personally knew I included in this newsletter. And it just warms my heart that I have Katia on my Patreon, it's amazing. Also, more news about Katia around here pretty soon, wink wink. And that's all for now, so yeah, have a very nice Pride month and also why not? Uh, happy and morning second anniversary to you too. <laughs> okay, goodbye. See you slash read you on the next one. Bye.